John Grant, you're very welcome to the programme. Thanks for dropping in, John. Hi, Dave. Thank you for having me. Good. Pleasure. Now, let's take a look at this. Um, the second album, Pale Green Ghost, although not second album in your life. You've been... Um, it's, it's ten years solo now, nearly, isn't it? More or less nine years. Solo? Yeah. No, it's been since 2009, basically. So, five Five, okay, yeah. and the czars was all before that. I want to. I'll yeah, talk that about was it. ten years. Yeah, that was ten years. Yeah. Okay, let's just take a look at what you're doing with Pale Green Ghost. Um, the first album, second album. The first album was so ravely received, and you know, Uncut's album of the year, Mojo, whatever, like, all over the place. Yeah. Were you happy with the response? Absolutely. I, you know, I, I, you certainly can't shake a stick at that. You know. That kind of response. John, you are, can I say, enthralled to language. You like getting your songs together in terms of the way it all means. You use words that people don't even necessarily know the meaning of. I might have to look up the thesaurus to see what it means. Yeah. Um, is it like, are you, are you a bit of a Russian scholar as well or just know a bit of Russian? Yeah, you know, I, I've, spent a, I've spent a large, you know, over half of my life, uh, you know, dedicated to um, learning foreign languages because I just love it. It's just a passion of mine. And so... Um, Words are very important, and, 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 you know, in learning other languages, it sort of makes you aware of the fact that you're not very good at your own language, because, you know, I, I wasn't... Um, it really improves your English, you know, your native tongue is what I'm saying, you know, going into these other languages, so I think it's an incredible thing to do. It is, you know, it opens up huge parts of the world, and, and I guess I'm just a word freak. I'm a little bit of a, a nerd when it comes to that sort of thing. It's you're also okay. You're yeah. also somebody who wears your heart in your sleeve very much in yeah. interviews, when you talk, on the songs, etc. Yeah. Yeah. And you've had a tough enough life, or do you think you have had? Um, you know, from what I hear out there, it doesn't sound very tough to me compared to what I see other people going through. Um, but I think you know, you, one has to take things in context. You know, I, I don't. I'm not living other people's lives. I'm just living my life, and I think it depends on, you know, your 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 personality, your your mental constitution, your mental, all of that sort of thing, you know, how your life affects you. And I've definitely, um, I've definitely had a hard time with myself for sure. But, um, you know, there seems to be a lot out there that's a lot worse, so. But I get the I impression really even from listening to stuff, like there's a, like there's a lot of anxiety and some depression, etc. Like you, yeah. you talk about a horror movie going on in your head kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. And we get that through the albums. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's all going on, you know, most of the, the horrible stuff is going on in my head. You know, there was a lot of stuff on the outside, too, when I was younger, and that sort of starts the horror story going on in your head. It's that gift that keeps on giving, you know? Um, so, you know, it's, it's just a matter of working through stuff for me, and I think the reason that I'm so frank and the reason I talk so openly about all these different things, um, you know, bringing up stuff like having HIV and all, all of those things is because... Because for most of my life, I was so afraid to talk about the things that mattered to me and the things that I was going through. And it was not okay for me to talk about the things that actually pertain to who I am. That I, I think at one point, you just sort of break and you say, well, I'm just going to tell it like it is no matter what from, from this point on. But from a Midwest, if you like, conservative background, mm -hmm. was it hard to be gay growing up? And did you blame yourself for maybe having something wrong because your father might have been so against you? Oh, yeah. Um, I mean, I, I, you know, that's one of the things that, that, I, that I have so much rage about. Um, you know, when I talk about in, in GMF on the album about being so angry and barely being able to conceal it, you know, I think about a lot of the treatment that I received uh, from people when I was growing up, and I was never able to stand up for myself because I thought that I was getting the treatment that I deserved because I was a sick pervert who was going to hell, you know. And so that was particularly humiliating, I would say, you know, to to actually believe that the people who are treating you this way or attacking you verbally or physically were doing what what they should be doing, you know, so I do have a lot of anger about that and I and I like to express it. And would you have a lot of anger with your dad or is there any kind of meeting ground there now at the moment? Like there was a lot of bigotry. Like if you go to visit in Missouri, would you yeah. talk about your sexuality now to your dad? No. No. No, we wouldn't. I mean, people don't ask questions. You know, people, you, you, that's something that you really notice is when I go back for Thanksgiving in Missouri, in southern Missouri, for example. You know, people just don't ask you about these, about your love life or about these things because people don't want to talk about it with you. But my dad, I don't really have any anger towards my dad. Um, I think he did. I, I really, you know, he, he built the two houses that I grew up in, you know, single-handedly, you know, he was, he was there. He always told us that he loved us. And I, I think he was doing the best that he could. You know, the fact that he couldn't accept this, 
um, but is your art, if you like, is yeah. your music cathartic to you? And have you kind of been able to being able to express it in music, the albums that we hear? Does it help the process of whatever it happens to be? That, for instance, if he has to accept you, is there an element where you realize, wow, wait a second now, hold on a second now, I have to accept him? Absolutely. Somebody brought that up to me. You know, this whole tolerance thing, it goes both yeah. ways. Absolutely. And I feel like. And that's why I don't feel like I have anger towards him because I do feel like if I want him to accept me that I need to accept him the way he is. Um, the difficult part of it is that I don't feel like we have a lot in common. I don't feel like we have a lot to talk about. So that can be awkward, but a lot of people have that. I mean, that's not really something that you can, that you can say is a negative thing. That's just the way it is. So, you know, I love my dad and it's unfortunate that we weren't able to communicate when I was younger, but, you know, you become an adult and, you, you know, you're responsible for making your life work at some point you can't be it doesn't matter anymore what happened to you because those people you know for example my mother's dead you know so you have to get on with things because you can't just be revisiting all of these things and letting them continue to hurt you because you're just screwing yourself you know you're not living the life that you could be living i just want to enjoy my life and i suppose um, you know, just like anybody else. And I, I suppose that this music or what I do in music is my way of feeling like I was able to express myself about what happened to me or about what's going on inside of me, whereas I didn't feel like I could do that when things were, when a lot of things were actually happening, you know. But the reaction to the first album was so good and so yeah. strong and so album of the year all over the place yeah. that, like, does that give you any kind of self-worth of realising, I am doing something right here, I'm doing something good here, and let you cross a certain Rubicon to be where you are now? Or is there a place you are now that's better than where you were? Uh, yeah, I feel like I'm always making progress, you know. <clears throat> like I said, it's all about learning how to enjoy my life and not getting upset about the, the small stuff, as they say, you know. And uh, being grateful, I think you got to be grateful to be here every day. It may sound cheesy, but it's true. When you wake up in the morning, you need to be grateful that you're still here, that you still get to go outside and enjoy the, you know, the, the landscape. For example, I'm, I'm lucky enough to be living in Iceland right now, and I do feel, you know, I do feel like I'm learning to at least to just be grateful that I get to go out and sing for people, that I get to do this for a living now, and that I get to, you know, see all these incredible places all over the world and talk to interesting people all over the world and yeah. see all sorts of different cultures. I do feel like a lucky man. And as far as, you know, the, as far as the re reception to the first album, you know, I really feel like, I really feel like, you know, this self-worth has to come from inside, you know, because <clears throat> I don't want to take, I don't want to allow it to affect me too much when it's positive because it can also... You can also come out with an album that everybody hates, and then if, if my self worth is based on how I'm being received, good point. Then the, then yeah. it'll be a, too much of a roller coaster, you know. So yeah, I, I want to just feel like I've made the music that I wanted to make, and then if people accept it the way they did with the first album, well, then that's just a huge bonus. Of and the way they are with the second album, by the way. Yeah, I mean, I, I I'm I feel I feel grateful. Let's just let's just say that and pleased. Okay, yeah. are you a restless kind of guy, John? Because I mean, like, I get the impression you're always keeping moving. Uh, like, you know, we're talking Colorado and Denver, New York, yeah. London, Berlin, and now you're living in Iceland. I am living in Iceland. Yeah, I, I guess I, I guess I am sort of looking for, you know. I guess I've still been looking for where I want to be, not sure where I wanted to be, you know, and I feel like while I don't have anything tying me down, like a mate or a, a pet or a house or a dog or, you know, or a, or a car or anything like that, I, I, you know, I had the opportunity to go to Iceland, which I've wanted to do for 25 years, you know, before I finally went and um, sort of fell in love with it, or very much so, and, and um, I feel comfortable there. You know, but I can imagine feeling comfortable in a lot of different places. Right. And... It's really good for me. I feel like it makes me a better American. You know, it makes me a much better American to be out in the world, picking up, studying all these languages and studying all these cultures. It makes me appreciate certain things about the United States, and it gives me, you know, it just opens up the whole world for you. And I, I feel like it's, you know, you gotta, you gotta do that. Okay, but like you, you say, you don't want to be tied down. You were tied down, or i.e., you had a relationship, yeah. and you you write about that relationship, a particular person, often, yeah. often all the time, in in terms of the uh, letters of yes. the name. Yeah. Yes. Now, I mean, like your partner left, and then the suicidal tendencies or thoughts came, or did they did they go with the depression and the anxiety and all the rest? Yeah, you know that that the feeling behind all of that was that I wasn't ever going to learn anything, that I wasn't ever going to 
you know, that no matter how hard I tried and to learn the lessons that were being given to me in life, that I wasn't learning them and continuing to make the same mistakes over and over. And that's sort of what led to that suicidal ideation, as they call it, you know, playing around with that as sort of a, um, you know, wanting to escape that pain that you feel like you keep bringing on yourself and that you, you know, it's like Groundhog Day, that movie, which I love, by the way, mm. um, where you keep getting up every day and you're Same trying thing. to move on. You're trying to progress. You're trying to become somebody who's capable of loving and allowing themselves to be loved and enjoy their life and all that. But it seems like you just keep getting caught up in the same old stuff. And that's sort of what led me to to feeling that way. And, it, you know, it makes total sense to me. And I feel like it. what it is, it's a total lack of perspective, you know. Um, and it's a difficult place to be in, just, you know, hearing that question and thinking about what it was like to feel that way. It's, it's, it's a physical pain, you know. But do you ever think you should relax more? Like, for instance, like, you know, you seem to have led yourself into an awful lot of self-loathing. Like, yeah. you know, you, know you, you seem to go to extremes in terms of sex, in terms of drink, in terms yeah, of drugs. Yeah, yeah. And, like, does that stop? I mean, is it, are you at a place now where it's going to be different? Well, I mean, I had to give up a lot of things, you know. I had I had to give up you know the drink and the drugs and and uh, you know reevaluate my my relationship to sex and a lot of these things I I, I feel like it's I'm I'm definitely in a much better place you know because I um, but I do have that and and sure I would like to relax a lot more and and feel like I wish I could just let go of a lot of things you know but it, for oh, me it just seems to be very difficult you did let go of something very important in terms of your career because you know the, the success of that first album so big and your association with Midlake in Texas no I'm not going to go to Midlake in Texas for my next album I'm going to take the St. Vincent route if you like yeah. and I'm going to go Iceland that's yeah. a bit of a jump I love St. Vincent wow yeah she's here tomorrow with uh, she's amazing. David Byrne yeah yeah um, yeah, I, I, I was going to do my second album with a couple of the guys from Midlake, and I decided to stay in Iceland and do it because I think I sort of wanted to, I wanted to assert myself in, in maybe a way that I hadn't uh, quite done with the first album and really start to take it in that electronic direction. You know, I'm sort of torn between, you know, my love for the 70s and my love for, or my love for, you know, the 70s AOR and rock music and, and um, that type of thing and my love for, you know, electronic music from the 80s. Well, then let's take a look at that because Queen of Denmark, the first album, is, you call it, the 70s album. This one here now, Pale Green Ghost, you call it the 80s album. Yeah. Now, what do we mean here by 80s? Now, I know that Sinead O'Connor's on the album with you yeah. and you would have been around at discos or doing whatever one does, dancing to Mandinka all those years ago. That's right. So did you ring Sinead or did you say, I need Sinead on here or what is it? Did she no. mean much to you when she was, like, making huge music, topping the charts everywhere? Yeah, she did. She always has, she's always been at the top of my list, you know. And um, it, what came about between us is happened quite s gradually and naturally because she covered Queen of Denmark on her yeah. most recent album, and that sort of opened the door for me to contact her and say, "Hey, I'm John, you know, and, and uh, how's it going and all that." And and we we just we just clicked, you know. And then, you know, I played her some demos from. Uh, you know, Pale Green Ghosts, and she was really into it and said, you know, I'm singing on your album, and I, I didn't argue. <laughs> and, you know, it's, it's a huge, huge deal for me. Okay, and what about the music then itself? I mean, like, you liked Devo and you liked Yellow, so why yeah. did it take you so long to, if you like, dabble with electronic music? Do you feel as though it did take you too long to do that? You should have done this some time back? Yeah, I mean, I feel that way about a lot of things, you know. <laughs> yeah, okay. I feel I should have done a lot Join of things the differently. Club. Yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. yeah. But, you know, I, I never, you know, all I did was spend my money on, on drink and drugs, you know. I didn't have the money to buy the equipment and to learn. I, I, I wasn't, I was just sort of, I just sort of wasn't accomplishing anything, you know. It took me, I didn't know how to make that music that I wanted to make, and I just sort of um, used whatever, uh, used whatever I had available to me. And at the time, you know, with, with the czars, it was you know, people who played these acoustic instruments that I that I clicked with initially. And then with Midlake, you know, it wasn't, that was never going to be an electronic album with them. It no, couldn't be. of course. And so I think the reason I didn't want to do this next album with them was not because, because I, I, I will work with them again. I love them. They're a very important part of my life. But I needed to um, make sure that I started going in this other direction that I have always wanted to explore because I... You know, I just love the sound of a of a of a synthesizer, especially a 
a Juno 106, which is all over this current album. Right, and like a John Carpenter's electronic soundtrack stuff would be something that means an awful lot to you. Absolutely. What are we talking about? Assault of Precinct 13 kind of stuff, is it? Down, 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 yes. All that stuff, yeah. Yes, yes, that's so beautiful. I, especially my favorite one of his with Alan Haworth uh, is uh, the soundtrack to Halloween 3. Right. Absolutely stunning. John, are you a bit of an overthinker? That you just maybe need to relax a little bit, you know? That like, oh, yeah. it, and it leads you to some Oh, that's sort of, the good news. Yeah, oh, <laughs> yeah. But it leads you to some kind of fear that you kind of wish, you know, really I should just take each day as it comes. Yeah, but, you know, for, for whatever reason, I, I was never able to do that. And so right. it's, just a, it's just a long... It's a, it's a long road of remind... You know, because it feels like if you, if you don't have the ability to do that naturally... Yeah. For me, you know, a lot of times I feel like I get up every day and my brain reboots to where it was. Wherever, no matter how much I learn, my brain just That's reboots. Groundhog Day, right yeah? at the beginning. Yeah, yeah. Groundhog Day. Yeah. Think so. Yeah. But I do, I do try and take you know each day as it comes, and I, I just try and be you know grateful that I get to do what I'm doing, and um, and try and take advantage, uh, take advantage of every day as much as I can. You know, but I don't, I don't know really what else to do. You okay, know? you're not in a relationship now. Would you like to be? That's a good question. I'm not sure. I, I tell myself that I would like to be in a relationship, but uh, I mean that's not the easiest thing in the world either, you know. And this and this this love that uh, you know this feeling that you you hear about in movies and everything. When I experienced that for the first time with this you know guy I, I write about a lot, um, I didn't think that that was something that would ever happen. I feel I felt that was reserved for you know specific people, and that doesn't happen. Well, then is TC the first two albums, and there's no more TC on album number three, maybe. I don't know. I think he'll. I think he'll be around for a long time. That affected me quite profoundly, you know, because of where Did I was. Did it help at, with the writing? Sure, I'm. I'm supposed to. Forms it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, absolutely. I, I, but I'm not sending him any money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. What comes first for you, John? Is it like is the words first, and then you put the music around it? That's another good one. I'm constantly thinking about that myself, and and you know most of the time it's words, usually choruses, um, or what I think will be a good chorus, and then I write it down, and then the music comes later. But sometimes I get music, but it seems like I always want to mold music around lyrics. That right, seems okay. to be what happens yeah, with yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. Whichever, is, whichever is the creative process, whichever works for you. Yeah. I mean, do do you need do you think like to forgive yourself, and that this record now, the Pale Green Ghost, means that you have. Mm, I don't know. I, the only thing that I want, I, I just want to feel like I'm no better or no worse than anybody else. That's that's what I would like, you know. I think that's a great place to be, um, that I'm just, you know, yeah, no better, no worse than anybody else. And I'm I'm getting there, you know. Like, you don't keep an awful lot of secrets necessarily. Do you think the potential suitors might be put off by your honesty? To hell with them if they are. Um, you know, if if they're if people are put off like by, by stuff like that, then then they're probably not who I wanted would want to be with in the first place. I don't need no lightweights around here. <laughs> hey, by the way, you met a few heavyweights. You were at the Ivor Novello Awards, and uh, yeah. you're talking to Peter Gabriel. And who's behind him? The great, the wonderful, the genius that is Randy Newman. <sighs> did you meet Randy? I sure did. Yeah. How, yeah. Was, how was Randy? Well, he was very sweet. I only got to talk to him for a second. And, uh, well, I, I wouldn't even say that I got to talk to him. I just met him quickly, and, you know, it was a huge honor to meet him, and I've always been a big Peter Gabriel fan as well. Okay, but, but I, I, I wanted to talk about Randy, because I mean, I sure. I'm a major Randy Newman fan. Yeah. Do, you, do you not think that Randy can put in two lines what a novelist puts in a whole book? He, he nails it just so right. Yeah, he's one of those... He's, he's got that gift, that amazing gift. And I didn't even really know about it until I... Um, you know, people were people were throwing that name at me a lot before I really knew about him and yeah. who, and and what he's really done. But yeah, upon closer inspection, upon that does appear to be the case. Yes. Going back on the back catalogue, yes. you got the box set of Randy, <laughs> yeah. whatever. All right, well, listen, John, I am going to let you go. Yeah, okay, you might as well um, look at your list again. Where are you playing again? What time? I'm playing. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I'm playing in Rankin's Wood tonight. Right. At what time are you on it? Um, half nine. Half nine. Well, I'm going to go out now and see Robert Plant out here. He's on the main stage as we speak. Well, just, just about to be. I'm going to hand over to... I got to meet him from... earlier. That was a big Did thing you? for me. Yeah. Really? Yeah. yeah, right. Very cool. Were you a Led Zeppelin fan growing up? No. Well, you know, I was I was listening to ABBA when they were big. and <laughs> But I, I, I remember this amazing 
time, one of the a great memory of riding in my brother's, you know, Dodge Charger on the way to this uh, River City Records in South Bend, Indiana. We were on our way to pick up In Through the Outdoor, which had just oh, come right, out, yeah. and we were going to get the very late album. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, but I just remember riding with my brother to go pick up that album, and and uh, and later. You know, my brothers had you know nothing but disdain for my for my love of ABBA at the time, and then recently I found out that In Through the Outdoor was recorded in ABBA's studio in really? Stockholm, which I did not know. So there wow. was there was a connection there. We did have something in common back then. <laughs> All right, well look, I'm going to play another track from John Grant now, but just before I do, album number three. Then I've I've read something about like Einstein's and Neubert into Beach Boys. It might be a bit of all of that, yeah. Yeah, we'll see. That's what I fantasize. <laughs> Tango about. hammers on stage. <laughs> Yeah, that would be beautiful. <laughs> Destroy the whole place. Absolutely. All right. Listen, John, it's been a real pleasure. Congratulations on both those albums. I only knew the Zars very slightly, yeah. but I do know these, and I'm looking forward to album number three as well. Thank uh, you, Dave. Onwards and upwards and keep it up. Brilliant. It's a pleasure. Okay, let's hear some music from John Grant. <laughs> 